before I start, um, I would like to pose a question. Um, how many of you have ever wondered why there is um, so much information, magazines and internet um, available on only one side of the supply chain? This is something I found out uh, eight years ago, why there is a, a vast number of information um, systems, training, etc., available for only half of the chain. Um, I will take you today uh, on the journey on the other half of the chain, which to my opinion is equally important and very, very challenging. Um, I have prepared for that a small agenda. Um, feel free for any questions. And let me just take you on the right to uh, the part of supply chain that supplies the raw materials and products to the manufacturers that, in the end, make the products that we use every day. Before I start with that, um, it would be very impolite not to give a short impression of who you're dealing with here today. I was already introduced. Um, my name is Marcel Wouters. This is me. Um, this is a random choice of a computer, so don't think my kids are less important than business or that my first and second wife is any less to uh, opera. Um, um, if you want any, any questions about this, this is my life. I like to run. I love Adidas. I really love FC Eindhoven. I play, played professional soccer. I'm an idiot for business psychology. I studied business economics. I will never stop learning. Um, well, here you are. More interesting is our supply chain, though, and especially the part of which we are operating. Um, I'm the COO of Vandenbosch, and Vandenbosch is an Arab, a Dutch company, and it's really a great company to work for. It's uh, been a great company, and it will be even a better company. And I hope to, at the end of this presentation, uh, give you a, a bit of an insight on our part of supply chains and the challenges or struggles, as I mentioned them, because everybody's always talking about struggles or challenges, but I often feel them also as struggles. Um, to give you an idea, um, not so long ago I was invited by a, a university to talk about control towers. Um, I was asked to stand uh, in a similar way here and uh, work out a debate with a challenger and my uh, um, thesis was control towers should be called support towers because no man wants to be controlled. As you can see, this is the eye of Mordor. Uh, I love films as well. Um, nobody wants to be controlled, but support is a little gentler thing. And um, my opponent got introduced in the session before uh, um, the actual day and said, well, you're from Vandenbosch, right? He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. A truck company. So what do you have to do with these control towers? It's high tech. You drive trucks. He was a very nice man, I have to say that. Uh, uh, actually, very nice. And um, I said, yeah, well, listen, you know, we've been around for quite a long time already. Um, half a century, as a matter of fact. And this is our proud to be 50th anniversary year. Um, we are as Hoyer, a family-owned company. So it has many opportunities. We can really uh, uh, change gear very fast. Um, we are uh, specialized in dry and bulk. So I explained to him, um, we have some very big customers as well, and most likely whatever you will eat tonight or you have eaten tomorrow, there's a fair good chance that, that we've trucked it around, or as you will later see, not only with trucks or limited number of trucks. So these companies are really the big players, and we're um, supplying them with the raw materials. Um, we're in the uh, non-food um, uh, uh, animal feed business, a little bit in chemical, but most of it is in food, liquid and dry. I told him further that, um, well, it's not like a, a war room picture that we dominate Europe, but we're everywhere in Europe. You'll find us everywhere. We have 5,000 load units, and many, many, many many, many factories we supply every day. We know our business. And we used to do this by trucking around. Um, but today, there's a limited use of trucks. We converted the company from when I started working with it uh, from 16, 1,700 people to less than 700 today with no revenue uh, drop, but just decreasing the number of people uh, virtually every day. 
um, not losing any revenue, but we, we, we simply don't need to truck anymore. We use rails and waterways. Um, as a matter of fact, I told them, we're not only in Europe, but this truck company is also in Africa, and we're expanding there um, very rapidly. There's a, there's a huge market for us, and we have our own big five. So you can watch our Nyrosphorus also, but we call it oils, chocolates, juices. And we are very big in business development. And as a matter of fact, I said, we do not only transport, but we do also deliver supply chain solutions. Um, we innovate with our customers. We work with them to optimize. I told them there's another side to uh, the supply chain. And of course, he understood. But it got me thinking, how is it possible that um, my opponent, who worked for a government institute on harmonizing um, just what uh, uh, half, uh, uh, my previous uh, uh, my colleague speaker uh, about harmonization uh, in the Netherlands, there's an institute that's subsidized to get um, people to talk about the same languages, same event management, uh, cost structure. I worked in aviation. Uh, for 12 years, and we all speak the same language there. There's nobody who has a different language, but in logistics, we do. But I told them, I said, listen, we're a big company, and we're on that side. It, it, it didn't, um, it, I couldn't let go of it, because I, I knew what challenges we had in, uh, uh, coming for us um, at Vandenbosch and in our supply chain. And how was it possible that such a very big institute, very important, smart guys, underestimated half of the supply chain. Then I thought up an idea to compare the supply chain with a brain, just to get the message across. So which of you would think that the bulk supply chain people uh, reside in the brain, if you compare us with a supply chain? Would we be on the left or on the right side? There are people who think that the brain is split. Maybe um, uh, you're here in the room, it is a theory. On the right side, you have these creative people who invent stuff. Um, they're um, very into music emotions. You can read about it. And on the left brain, you have these guys who are logic calculated. And I was looking for our supply chain. Where would we be? Uh, we are on the upstream side. Would we be on the left side? Um, some would say, yeah. I, the other day I got this picture from uh, the supermarket shopping and I took a picture of this. Um, later I got it from the internet. Um, to me this looks very creative. Um, this is juice in the supermarket on the other side of supply chain from manufacturer to customer. So this is clearly not a bulk supply chain. If you would look at it, it's, uh, the bulk people would say, wow, this is really creative. Putting juice in a bottle like 2.0, why not put it in a container? You'll have 150 of them, it would be cheaper, 150,000. Why put it in the refrigerator and then keep it warm with a hat on? It's an individual kind of thing, so surely this is the right side. Um, quickly, these people from this excellent juice uh, company would I hurry it to say, hold on, hold on, we really thought about the numbers as well. So uh, we're critical thinkers. Um, uh, don't put us on the left side, give us some of on the right side, only give us some left brain activity also. And I would immediately agree, because they're very smart people, they think about market share, they thought ahead of the game. Um, also, people in our company would say, yeah, hold on, um, if they're getting some of the left side of the brain, we want something of the right side as well. And I agree with them also, because if you look at our business, I would not be surprised that very soon here in the Kunsthalle in Dusseldorf, you would come and visit the art of bulk. Um, um, it is really something very nice. I really like Technic. And if you look at the hoses and um, what, what nanotechnology can bring us, Today we're dragging these hoses everywhere, give examples. Maybe today and in the future we would have 3D printers. Say, oh, you forgot your hoses, don't worry, I'll print one here. Um, but this is a piece of art. It is really, really a piece of art, which 
a lot of people don't know and you drive by it every day. This is a common story about our left and right side brain and the supply chain, which I like to compare as a full brain. But something is going on in our business. In our business of supply chain, of the bulk, something really will happen very, very soon. And this morning we had a great presentation. My colleague also, there, there, there are technology um, innovations, so I will not go in too deep about that. That's obvious. That's why we're here. This is why uh, Quintic has a great tool which can assist us. So I will not bother you about that. This is my friend Michi Okaku. I don't know him, but I read his books. He's very popular. It's like the David Attenborough of science. Um, I like him because it's accessible. I love maths and I love physics, um, but it's also easy reading. And I, um, uh, I can recommend his books, but that's not the reason why he's here. I stole something from him, uh, which I could use for this presentation, and it's the stages of technology he, he recognizes in his books. Um, I'm sure you read about it. If not, it's very interesting. Whenever there's a new technology, let's say paper, it's quite unique, um, a, th a thousand years before Christ, they had, uh, it was only used by kings and very rich people to write things on. It was holy. It was quite unique. Then later, um, around 1500, book press, availability of paper got cheaper. Everybody got it, more or less. Slowly, you move into the phase of commonness, which we've passed for paper, because everybody's got it, obviously, it's very cheap. Today we're in the um, ubiquity phase, and that means it's omnipresent. Paper is everywhere. You'll find it on the wall. You will find it um, uh, as a packaging tool. It's not to write anymore, and you clean your behinds with it as well. Th thousand years for Christ, nobody would believe that paper would be used for that. So that's an interesting sidestep. An interesting. But, but what does that mean for bulk supply chain and for technology? I really used this model to shape our company. I knew technology was in the commonness phase. And that means it got cheaper every day. It's available. I made already new friends here yesterday and got two free apps, which most likely I would have paid for um, a year ago or half a year ago. So the, the, the phase of commonness is really something striking. And, um, this is what it does. This is what it does. I've got friends of mine who operate. Whenever they have too much wine to drink, they start whining about, oh, I cannot operate anymore. The computer is taking over. Stuff like that. Yes, it's taking over. There are new, um, um, uh, pr uh, how do you call it? There's a training program for technicians and operations uh, um, uh, doctors. So there's a new professions created there. You can read every day about the future of medicine and nanotechnology, um, what will happen to the newly bought 100 trucks we signed for two weeks ago when new uh, sources of energy are created tomorrow. I don't know. But I will not bother you with space travel. But what will happen in the bulk transport? How does this commonness phase have effect on us? All the other branches, the Google car, the Google Glass, but what about the bulk? What about that half of the brain, half of the supply chain? How is that going to be uh, affected? Because there's a huge ICT, as we speak, a huge ICT blood vessel going to that part of the brain, wherever it resides. For some of you, it is not so striking. It struck me four years ago. This was like an um, uh, epiphany. It's something like a clear moment. I must have been walking, not, not not, not working, 4% huh? chance of such bright ideas. It, it really shaped my idea of uh, technology in bulk. There is a huge amount of blood, and this is what it will increase, of, this is what it will bring. It will bring cost savings, it will bring agility, um, it will bring e increased visibility, of course, all the common things. It will come to bulk as well, but it never did so before, because a lot of um, the people in the, that part of the brain could simply not afford or they were not open yet to receive such new technologies. But all of a sudden, they are. It will bring us better decisions. Everything is already set today. This is clear for you. This will happen. Also for us. 
But to be able to capture the full potential of this ICT blood vessel going to our brain, we need to overcome some struggles as this elephant is clearly demonstrating. It has to find a new balance. And this new balance is something that um, uh, uh, is best explained by this uh, uh, model, this tri-scale. If you put the technology here on the scale, and clearly you saw the exponential growth of technology, whether it's information, big data, and you put it on this scale, the scale will be tipped. And uh, to my vision, the scale needs to be in balance. If it's off balance, something goes wrong. And the things that can balance it is manpower or people or methodologies. I'm sure this is not something uh, tested by Fraunhofer. Um, I steal everything from the internet. Um, it's for free and I use the models in my mind to create clarity and to bring across a picture. Um, it works for me. Hopefully it gives you a little bit of insight. Something needs to balance the technology weight increase. And to my opinion, that's manpower and the way of working, the, the methods of working, the methods of uh, how we work in a bulk sector. And I will explain how we solve that. Um, we knew technology was coming and I will try to give you a little bit of insight on our, how our company is first tipping the balance and then restoring it again. Only then you can use the full potential. It's very simple. If you have technology and you cannot work with it, you get chaos. If you have uh, different ways of working and you're not willing to share, as obviously explained, you cannot make use of the technology. And that's a, a methodology. You need to change your way of working. In our company, we developed a triple A system. It's easy to use for everybody. You need to be triple A. And the first A stands for ability, and it will help you understand the struggles, and it will help you overcome them. Just to give you a little bit of an idea of the many ability struggles one could, uh, could have within our company, but also in the bulk sector in general. And this is what we saw four or five years ago, before we started working with Quintech, which we signed a contract the last day next, last year. So we're in the midst of implementing at the moment. But education is a huge problem in logistics. To my opinion, there's no education, the profession is not ready, ICT proof. So this is a huge struggle. People, um, and especially management, uh, also will have ability struggles. They used to be able um, to make a decision very quickly and only limited number. So send this and this truck, send this and this uh, load unit to this and this customer. But today, they have many different uh, uh, decisions. The decision support systems will give them a lot of uh, uh, changes, a lot of uh, decisions. So management needs to change their ability. A big thing is on attitude. That's the second A we use internally in our company. It's attitude struggles. Here also, this is a balance restorer also. If you have a lot of information, a lot of ICT, a lot of enhanced um, um, uh, computer technology, um, you need to find a new way and cooperation in the supply chain uh, in our end of the supply chain is very limited. Um, every day um, trucks, our trucks or our containers go to factories and, they, and these factories receive hundreds of trucks or five or ten or many. Each truck is supplied with its own hoses and its own set of couplings whilst they only need one and they're also different types. This is um, um, an attitude struggle because nobody's really willing to change and take up um, this challenge. While we, the ICT systems help us see and recognize there's potential. Companies inside have huge struggles because the information is now available. Now quality can see what is wrong and the tender guys are fighting with the supply chain guys and the production guys are fighting etc. I'm, I'm sure I'm not telling you anything new, but we are entering this game also. And we have now the data and we see these hundreds of fa uh, factories really struggle every day giving us um, not the right information or um, not the information at the right time. So if you look at information sharing for instance, we get our production data if we're lucky 12 hours before we have to deliver. Um, 
what will happen if we get it 12 hours sooner? And, we're not, and, and what is 12 hours? And it's really an accountability thing because overlooking the complete brain, the complete supply chain, you have to be accountable to, to put uh, CO2 savings, money savings, people savings by giving us uh, more information faster. And we're not talking about big data. I often say small data, 12 hours sooner, please. Balance in risk and profit sharing are humongous opportunities there. If you take a look at investment in, in equipment or people or different setup in supply chains, there are many, many gains, but um, not as many willingness to um, balance the risk. And I'm not even talking about profits. So there's another one is very active in our company. We struggle with unions every day, not because uh, cheap labor or anything, but just simply because each country looks upon labor laws differently. And we're um, a European uh, community, but from that respect, the truck driver, for instance, or the operations logistics employee on a site is fairly, uh, is, is, is really um, bad, badly managed in the politics. There are different structures everywhere, and everybody's pulling at this truck driver. Um, you can call it challenges, and previously I call it struggles, just because um, I, I'm really a very positive guy, and I always talk about ch uh, challenges. So when I talk in our organization about challenges, um, I will never mention struggles. But for this audience, um, you're the big guys, you know that we struggle also. You know it. We, 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 we know that there's a struggle uh, in implementing big data or the, the possibilities we have with technology. The way we overcome them, or at least we're trying to overcome them, is to set up a, a strong, really strong strategy implementation process. I'll give you a little bit background. Before the period of 2000, our company was focusing on growth, and how did we do that? Uh, Peter van der Bosch is the COO of the, uh, of the company, and he thought, I can do it better than my dad, and he did, as a matter of fact, although his dad was great as well, he still is alive. Uh, but um, his dad did it truck by truck, he bought companies. Grow, grow, grow. In 2007, this is when I entered the company. Many companies need to be consolidated because there was um, uh, seeping away profit. It was still a very strong company, we have a good result, um, but we wanted to make it better. So it was an easy job for me, consolidate all the different business units. 10, 000, 2010, something happened to me because I knew we couldn't do it by just simply buying and selling companies. We had to have a firm, some sort of an other kind of strategy if we were to harness these ICT possibilities which were coming, which were very clear to me by 2010. Um, these are our strategy goals and the way we set it up was from the ground, really from the ground up. We have some core values in a company and I reinstated the core values. These are our core values. You have to be AAA for sure, but somewhere in, uh, beneath in your soul, you have to have the willingness to do this. If not, you cannot work for our company. Um, this is our vision on the supply chain. We, when, when I wrote it down um, in 2010, uh, we didn't have any world-class operating systems. So when I explained it to the company, they said, what, 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 world-class operating systems? You, you mean the system we're using here today, which we're still using today? Um, we have bought computer systems. We were the first and the last. We still have 17-year-old board computers. So soon we'll change them for apps. Uh, when I, um, uh, and it's very cheap. It's, it's probably a, a, a good decision. But at that time, everybody laughed about world-class operating systems. Also, performance-based cust um, culture, that was clear. They're very performance-driven. Best people? Are we the best people, said everybody. I said, yes, we are. And we started implementing training programs, making the company ready for the ICT flood that would come. So not getting the systems in, because at that time it was also a hard, because um, yeah, first you need to have a write-off on the current systems, and then there's a willingness to invest. I'm sure you know how it works. Um, it, it surely works in our company. Um, so I had to wait, but I used the time to prepare the business from a, a personal point of view. Um, and I really set a layer of a vision, and it's still very sound today. I built upon that our strategy, and the most important one is growth. And then I think the, the, um, the easiest part 
but also the part which a lot of companies uh, forget to do is to break it down in modular units which you can really implement. And these uh, areas we implemented in, uh, during the course of the last four years. And I, I will not bore you with all, but just take one soon. We'll have an advanced planning system if you would call Quintic Advanced, and I think you all agree that it is. So we, we worked on this for four years. I didn't tell the Quintic during the process, but it was a, for us a, um, a very lengthy search. As another, I would like to share with you is the Vandenbosch experience. Um, we called it at that time the experience because we knew we had to capture people. And I will explain what I mean by that. Vandenbosch to the next level. We take you on a journey through the world of transport and supply chain management. Want to take a ride? Tell me and I will forget. experience. Register now. Vandenbosch.com slash experience. It was a 30 second, 1500 euro costing, hmm, costing film. Um, we, 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 we felt we had to bring people together. The questions asked already about um, uh, let me see where I am, okay, away from the movie. The questions we asked ourselves, there are so many steps, and how we get people to share, and how do we get people to give us information, and to give us the 12 hours, or to come to a solution where we could say, listen, okay, we don't need any hoses anymore, here's one hose, and there's a, there's a ton of money to be, to be made. We need to get them inside our company. So instead of going, um, uh, no, we, we, we converted our marketing budget and built an experience. You're all invited, of course. It's very nice. You can spray around with hoses. You can sit inside a container. You can walk on it. You can feel what it's like to be living in our world. Um, it's the same we did with our Quintic implementation. We, 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 we worked towards it for a long, long time. Um, on the left corner here, you'll see a room that's in a central planning area. Um, there's, um, there's a statement room saying here is uh, the planning of the future. We made lots of people available, we take our time, we put everything on the wall. It's the whole process of implementation is on the wall. People are invited to come over and sit and have coffee. There's a people of Quintic working there as well. We're developing the next level. And whilst here is the, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, in, um, a picture of uh, our um, uh, experience. And um, th this is a, a group of people listening to uh, our implementation story. And uh, while I was thinking about how will I um, tell everybody about the future and about the next era where we'll, um, we will uh, yeah, ch change really a lot from the 17-year-old board computer to state-of-the-art equipment to sharing information and going to our customers, I thought, well, should I use words? And how do I explain such an um, yeah, elaborate vision? And, and um, I was in Berlin for the first time, and I knew I had uh, 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 five groups of people coming in, uh, listening to uh, our future. And I called my friend uh, uh, Marcus, Marcus van Rode, and he's a speed designer. And I'm really, I like design, I like artists, and I, because they can do so much more than uh, with, with just one picture instead of uh, I'm trying to explain you something in 30 minutes time. Um, 
they can do it maybe quicker. So I, I said, listen, Marcus, can you help me? Because I need to explain it to everybody, uh, to highly educated people, to people who drive trucks, who are very smart as well, and people on the planning, old, young. And I explained the story, and he came up with a picture. Um, it took him 10 minutes and five minutes changing. And um, so if you look at our future and our supply chain, I hope to have interested you in the other side of the brain, which of course there's no such theory as horizontal or lateral. The brain works as one, we all know that, and it has very interesting capabilities. So does our bulk supply chain. And this is how we see it. He also asked if he could put in some women. I said, yeah, why not? Um, it's the future, you know. Um, uh, you can see them connected with computers, with containers. And um, I'm really looking forward to, to developing with Quintic and also with other suppliers. And I invite you to take a look closer at the bulk supply chain network. Thank you very much.